So I have, I've uploaded my email list. I have about a thousand names on there. I've got the pixel. I'm getting, I'm getting about 2000 hits on my website a month. Okay. Um, I've got like, I've got a lot of engagement on my Instagram videos. I do a lot of videos. So I'm, I'm doing that. So, and then I've created some lookalike audiences. So should I have those all lumped together? Should I have throw in interests as well? Or should that like interest be a separate ad set? Yes. Um, interests, lookalikes and customs are your three different audience types. They will all always be separate. You will never, they're all independent. Customs should only be your custom audience. You should not have any interest layers. Uh, uh, yeah, layers, definitely not. Keywords, nothing like that. Lookalikes, just lookalikes. And if I were y'all, I would actually leave your lookalike to just one lookalike per ad set because it already will develop with 2.7 million people in it. So there's that. And then your, um, your interest, of course. You so, wanna... so for look, so I would do an ad that's say a lookalike of just my email list. And then another ad that's a lookalike yes. of just my web traffic. Exactly. And you'd okay, separate that, that helps. Cause I'd kind of had them all lumped in. Together. Yeah, no, you want to separate those because if it brings you results, you won't know who it's from. But the reason why I go against the grain with custom audiences, I'll tell you to consolidate those is because majority of you are new or your businesses are newer, your ad accounts are newer. And if you have um, a custom audience that doesn't have a lot of um, people in there, a lot of data, Facebook may not deliver. It may just be like, there's not enough in the sample size for us to go around. Don't ask me why, but I just say, avoid that altogether by putting together all of your warm audiences and then after a while of building data, you can split them up. Okay. And then I have a question. So I have, I have, I have a lead magnet that converts reasonably well. And then I get like, when people opt in, they get the one-time offer for something cheap. I do online courses. Should I be running ads, say to my lead magnet? Should I run ads to my cheap offer just directly? Or should I be focusing on my $500 course? I would focus on my $500 course. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do because when, okay, organically y'all can do whatever you want and organic is the best way to test. But here's the thing. When you're spending money, you want to, you want to make that money worth it. Like, yeah, maybe I spent a hundred, but I made a sale, right? So if you spent a hundred, but you, I mean, made a course sale, if you spent a hundred, but you're selling your low ticket offer, you may still be having to go through that same hundred dollars to make, I'm just making it $20. So not to say that you can't be successful with digital products, but if you have the option, I would definitely start off with your highest price point, which of course I'm, I'm assuming and hoping ethically here, it's also your most valuable. Okay. Right. And how much, like, cause when I run my courses, they're not like, they're, they're kind of like cohort based, like there's a mm -hmm. lot of live components. So how much lead time should I be doing with If I'm launching a course, say like June 1st, how much time should I start? Like if I want to get 10 people in it. Yeah. So it would depend on what funnel you choose, right? So you'd back that up. Are you doing a phone funnel? Are you doing a webinar funnel? You know? Uh, and yeah. If so, like, I don't know if you have this, if you're just asking hypothetically, but when is the webinar? You don't want to like close enrollment right before or right after the webinar. You know, you want to give it some time before a few weeks, at least, and then a few weeks, maybe at least two weeks after to retarget all those people who were on your webinar that maybe just need some time to make the decision. If you're doing a phone funnel, then that's like every day you'd want to build up to you're going along as you run the ads, you're filling up your calendar and you really only want to keep your calendar open anyway for a few days at a time. Because if you were to open your calendar up for like a month, people who book today for a few weeks from now, they're not going to remember you'll have a lower show up rate. So those are all things to consider. Okay. So if I was doing a webinar, like say for June, June 1st launching of the course, maybe a webinar like 10 days ahead of that, and then start running ads, say beginning of May. Um, yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. And also what you can do in the meantime, you can roll, run low budget ads to build up your email list in the meantime, so that when you do open up the doors to, Hey, my webinar is you know, approaching, you have a bunch of people who are your target audience who are interested, but have already said, yes, please keep me updated. So okay. that can definitely help your launch. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome.